Epic Software is one of the most commonly used systems in the hospital and healthcare market, but is it the right fit for your organization? I'm gonna talk about that here today. Epic Software is one of the leading EHR or electronic health record systems in the healthcare and hospital market. And it's proven itself quite the niche in the marketplace. It's been quite successful. It's a 40 year old company that does about $3 billion in revenue. And in fact, worldwide, about 3% of patients that go to hospitals or to doctors have their visits and their experience processed through Epic Software. In North America, that number is even higher at over 50%. So it's a product that has established a very strong niche in the marketplace. But the question that we get from a lot of our healthcare clients and hospitals is, is Epic the right software for us? And I wanna cover the pros and cons from an independent perspective here today. Now, if you're comparing Epic software to other EHR systems in the marketplace like Cerner or McKesson or Allscripts, you may be wondering what are some of the strengths that make Epic different? And some of those strengths, first and foremost, are that it can handle all of the needs or most of the needs of most hospital and healthcare organizations. This includes workflows like patient visits, scheduling visits, patient records, telehealth, ambulatory services, surgical, all the different components of a hospital and some of those healthcare related processes can be addressed by Epic. And Epic is one of the few systems in the marketplace that is built for EHR and for hospital operations. So that's probably the biggest strength of Epic is that it's been built over the 40 years to focus on this very specific need and this very specific and important niche in the economy. One of the other advantages that customers of Epic realize is improved workflows, more efficient workflows, more cost-effective workflows, better patient healthcare, which is very important. And that's particularly important in situations where it's literally a matter of life or death. So having the right technology that can help hospitals and doctors and healthcare providers provide better service and better outcomes for their patients can be very critical. And that's a strength of Epic is being able to provide and enable and automate some of those processes and workflows that allow hospitals to do that. Another strength and unique consideration with Epic software is that it has artificial intelligence and business intelligence and analytics that allow healthcare providers to provide better service and to better predict and understand patient needs. And this goes not only for their own patient population, but also benchmarking to other patient populations outside of their organization or outside their customer base. So that's a unique factor of Epic is there's so many organizations using this software that it provides customers to a very broad and robust set of benchmarks that healthcare providers can use to ascertain problems, look for trends, and understand what their own patients might be going through and what the proper solutions for those patients might be. Another consideration is because Epic is focused on healthcare and EHR is that it allows for regulatory compliance. So all the regulatory requirements of the healthcare industry can be met by Epic as well as some of the individual niches and bolt-ons or modules that fit within Epic. So for example, Epic provides modules or offers modules for uh, dental providers or for dermatologists or for home health care providers. So there's a lot of very small micro niches within the overall healthcare industry and Epic has the breadth to be able to address some of those varied needs. And because some of the biggest healthcare organizations in the world are using Epic, they've really invested heavily in the R&D to provide the functionality to address some very broad capabilities and needs that these organizations tend to have. Just like any solution out there that you might be considering, Epic also has its weaknesses in addition to the strengths that I've spoken about so far. And probably the biggest weakness of Epic and the biggest trade-off that organizations need to make when implementing Epic is that Epic is not a true enterprise resource planning or ERP system. So in other words, it doesn't necessarily address certain capabilities and needs that hospitals and healthcare providers have outside the realm of that, call it patient or customer experience. So for example, a lot of times hospitals will require an ERP system on top of Epic to address things like your financials, your accounting, your inventory management, fleet management, asset management, some of those things that are outside the direct realm of 
health records and direct patient care, you end up needing another system oftentimes to address some of those needs. Now, to be fair, most ERP systems, on the other hand, don't do EHR or don't do healthcare needs as well as Epic can. There are some exceptions. There's systems like Infor Cloud Suite that has specific capabilities built on top of their ERP system to address the needs of the healthcare market. But that's one of the few handful of ERP vendors in the marketplace that can do that. So what most organizations end up doing is if they end up implementing Epic, they also end up implementing some sort of back office ERP system to tie together. So that's probably the biggest weakness of Epic is that it can't address all of the needs of a healthcare organization. Another challenge that some Epic customers have had over the years is integrating and migrating data from Epic to other non-Epic systems. Now this is a problem that is more historic than recent. And in fact, in the past, there has been controversy from Epic customers that weren't able to move data or integrate data uh, to other non-Epic systems, but they have actually resolved that issue and, and made that less of a, of a problem, but it is something to keep in mind. They do have their health information exchange software, which helps translate and move data back and forth between systems. But it is something to keep in mind that just the fact that they provide the integration doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be easy and that there aren't some kinks to work through. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Another challenge of being an Epic customer is that there aren't as many implementation partners and technical consultants that know Epic as compared to some of the bigger ERP vendors, for example. So if you look at the population of Epic consultants and Epic partners and people that can help you implement the product, there's not as many as say a Microsoft or an SAP or an Oracle where there's tens if not hundreds of thousands of consultants throughout the world that know how the product works and can help you handle the functional and technical aspects of the technology. There's still plenty out there, but just not as many as you might see with some of the bigger vendors, something to be aware of. And this is especially true if you're not in North America. They're still branching out into other parts of the world. They've established a decent global footprint, but outside of North America, that problem is even more prevalent. Another challenge with Epic, which isn't really a reflection of the product itself or any sort of flaw in the product, is that implementing Epic can be painful for a lot of organizations. Again, not because the software is necessarily deficient, but because it imposes such a change to organizations that have manual processes and paper workflows and things of that nature. It can just be very difficult to change and to get people to adapt to those new processes. A great example is patient self-scheduling. The Epic EHR software provides the capability for patients to schedule their own appointments and their own visits to the healthcare provider. That can be a massive change for an organization that's used to taking phone calls and emails and scheduling themselves. It becomes an issue of a change management situation of how do we migrate people to this new way of thinking? What do we do with those people that used to spend their time helping people schedule their appointments and whatnot? Another example is data migration. Just moving your legacy data from whatever system or spreadsheets or papers you might have used before, getting that data into Epic is a lot easier said than done. And so healthcare providers typically have more strenuous data migration needs, which again, that's not a reflection or a flaw of Epic, but it is a challenge and a risk of implementing the technology. And then finally, and arguably most importantly, again, something that's not a reflection of Epic necessarily, but still a very real risk, is just the stakes of an implementation and the stakes of a failed implementation. Most healthcare providers have a very small margin of error for any sort of patient experience disruption or certainly any sort of urgent care disruption, for example. So you wanna make sure that you've really planned the implementation around the realities of your day-to-day -day operations and make sure you've mitigated risks so that you're not disrupting the patient experience. And then lastly, one of the most important things to consider as well is that Epic recently announced in the fall of 2020 that they were implementing a record number of installations of their technology throughout the world, meaning that they had more customers migrating to Epic than they had ever had in the company's history. That's great for them. It, it's a sign of the success of the company and it's a result of their traction in the marketplace, but there's risk there. Resources are going to be spread more thin and there's a higher likelihood of risk when you have that many implementations happening at once. So it's something to be aware of. It's not a risk that can't be mitigated, but something to have in mind as you embark on your journey. So is Epic right for you? Is this the right technology for your healthcare organization's needs? Is it better than IBM or McKesson or Allscripts or Cerner, any of the other options out there? 
And I can't give you a good answer to that other than to say it depends on what your requirements are and what your specific priorities are. And in order to help you maybe dive a little bit deeper into understanding whether or not it's a good fit for you, I've included some links below, including our 2021 Digital Transformation Report, which includes a number of independent reviews and comparisons of different software solutions in the marketplace, as well as best practices to help companies through their digital transformations. So I hope you found this information useful and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.